TKO. I'll say round two TKO for Mike Mullott. Okay. Uh, that brings us to this co-main event of the evening. Woo-hoo! My God. Uh, I'm so excited for this fight. Oh, my God. This is going to be a gonna fight. going to have a fucking heart attack as well. Uh, this. No disrespect to these ladies in the main event, but this is the fight on this card oh, that I'm going to have a heart attack going into the fight. Yeah. You know? This is, this is the main event. Oh, my God. Okay, Charles Del Bronx Oliveira taking on Benil Dariush in the lightweight division. The former champ, Charles Del Bronx, 33 year old out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. He is 33 and 9 with one no contest. 21 victories by submission. Add another nine knockouts to that. My man is a killer. Lost his belt in his last outing against Islam Mahashev. Back in October of 2022, uh, got finished in the second round by Mr. Mahashev. That snapped a one million fight win streak by <laughs> Charles Oliveira. Uh, how many times did he did he win the belt from Gaethje? And it was it vacant? Remind no, me. No, he he won, won the Dustin. belt from Chandler. Ch- from Chandler, not from Chandler. Vacant. Vacant against Chandler. Chandler. Yeah. Defended it twice against Poirier and Gaethje. Mm-hmm. Also has wins over Tony Ferguson, Kevin Lee, uh, a number of other names. Charles has been around for a minute and has sort of fought a who's who uh, in the UFC. All right, standing across from Benil Dariush, another guy who has been around for a minute, has also fought a who's who. And has been mounting quite a resume as of late with quite uh, the highlight reel as well. Benil, the 34-year-old, fighting out of California. He's 22-4 and four with one draw. Five wins by knockout. Eight wins by submission. And he is riding a eight-fight UFC win streak in the lightweight division coming into this weekend. Give this man... An effing title shot if he wins his fight. I mean, I know. Most recently, I should say, uh, he looked incredible against the rising uh, Matosh Gamrot back in October. Mark, start us off this time. Give us the odds, your take, and ultimately your pick. Okay, the odds. It's got to be a the, pick 'em. The former champion is the underdog. Oh, <gasps> disrespect. Lost. Plus 125. Oh, my God. Neil is minus 150. Oh, would, shit. That's a I, lot more. Disrespect. I would, I would guess that it probably opened very close and that the money has come in on Benil. Um, hmm. The reason I say that is because the whole world is picking Benil. Every huh. single thing that I have read or seen this week has been a pick for Benil. I have not seen a human being pick Charles Oliveira yet which is mind-blowing to me that we are just dismissing Charles Oliveira in this way. I get it that Benil's on this absurd run. But your boy is going with Charles Oliveira, as you may have guessed. I get it. I love this guy. It's been well-documented on this show that I'm a huge fan of Charles Oliveira. And maybe I am being blinded, and I don't even realize it, but I truly feel like Charles Oliveira is going to win this fight. Um, I forgot to say there's a, they're, they're the same height, two inches of reach for Charles. Um, every time I break down this fight in my brain, I land on the fact that my X factor is the finishing ability that Charles Oliveira possesses in the striking. They are both utterly disgusting grapplers, and I pray we get some grappling exchanges here because they'll be incredible. And obviously Benil is dangerous and carries power on the feet too, But I have a much harder time seeing Benil shutting Charles lights off with a shot than I do the other way around. Um, Of course, Benil's path to victory could be that he drops Charles and and dives on top of him like many others refuse to do because of the jiu-jitsu. Obviously, we saw Islam not be afraid to do it. Benil could be in the same boat, and maybe he wins that way. I do get that, that Charles won't get this time to reset that we've seen him use against other guys who will drop him and then refuse to follow him to the floor. But 
I'm going to say Benil gets caught in a flurry. You know Charles is going to come out hot, especially after how disappointed he was in his last performance. We've seen how hard he comes out. We've seen how quickly people like Poirier and Gaethje have been thrown off by the power that is coming back at them from Charles Oliveira and the accuracy of the shots that are hitting them. We've seen Benil get blitzed before. I mean, we've also seen him survive a blitz and get his own KO, such as he did against Jakar Close. But we've seen that he can get caught in a blitz and get his lights put out. Think about Alexander Hernandez. And Charles can do the same thing. Not to mention, as unreal as Darius looked against Gamrot, and I was one of the people saying it. I came on here and I raved about him. Part of me wonders if we're overrating his scrambling and grappling a bit. Because as good as Gamrat is, it was only two fights ago that he won a split decision over Diego Fajera where the grambling was pretty even. I'm grambling. Scrambling was pretty even. Grappling was pretty... I'm struggling. Where the grappling <laughs> was pretty even throughout the whole fight. And Charles Oliveira ain't Diego Fajera. So I don't know. I, I could be spectacularly wrong here. Maybe the Charles run is going to come to an end as suddenly as it kind of came about. Maybe Benil has just hit this crazy place where he's just not going to lose right now. It's all entirely possible. I mean, it's a fucking coin toss. We all know it's a coin toss. But I'm rolling with Charles Oliveira. I am going to say it is a round two knockout for Charles. Wow, knockout for Charles. Wow. Okay, Omar. This fight is... This fight is terrible to pick, man. <laughs> um, I can tell you that by the time that this fight goes on, I'm just more interested to actually see it than I am to pick it, being 100% honest. But... Uh, considering this is what we do on here, and considering I want a little bit of drama, I will be picking Benil Dariush wow. to win this fight. Um, the reality is, man, is there's a lot of things here that, that aren't 100% for Charles. Like, I feel like a lot of times they can be, right? Um, we put a lot of value in the, his submission game and his ability to finish, and I just think that Dariush is not the easiest guy to finish in the world. And while he has been finished before, so is Charles. Uh, and Charles has been submitted quite a few times for all the submitting that he does as well. So we know that he has vulnerabilities. Maybe he's sharpened a lot of them up and, and, and tucked some of them away. But a fight can sometimes bring a lot of things to light that have been put away for quite some time. Um, and Darius is in a great spot right now. I think that Charles Oliveira, having come off of that loss to Islam, losing his belt, not going into a rematch with him, kind of... I don't want to say shying away from that rematch, shying away from that opportunity, but definitely not something that he was keen on taking, which makes you wonder where his, where his head is at from a mental perspective. Um, Darius has been screaming at the heavens for the last two years to give him a goddamn title shot. So we know that this man is hungry um, and he's trying to kill somebody to get that belt. So I, I'm going to roll with Darius here, man. Um, I don't know if he gets a finish here. Um, if he does, I'll be honest, I think he, I think he submits Oliveira. But I do think it's a tall order, so I'm just going to stay safe here and go Darius by unanimous decision. Side so note, it's fucking ridiculous that this isn't a five-round fight. I mean, maybe it doesn't even make it through three, but it's fucking stupid. Oh, this is one of those times where I just automatically assumed it was five rounds. <laughs> yeah, it feels like a five-rounder. I was going to say, I think he takes three out of the five, but... Okay. Yep, three fucking rounds. Boo. Hopefully it's a finish then and it wouldn't have mattered anyway, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I I'm insulted that oh, Charles right. de Bronx is the underdog in this fight. That is insulting to me. Given his record, his re his overall resume, that he's a former champ, he just literally lost the belt. Uh and I will be taking Charles in this fight to win. Let's go. Um me and Mike versus the world, baby. I think. <laughs> and Charles. Me, Mike, and Charles. Excuse me. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I think... I mean, I do think it's going to be... I think it is a close fight on paper. I, I wouldn't have been that surprised if it was... If the odds might have been even a little bit closer. Um, I go back to Charles's ace up his sleeve that Charles can take a punch, not meaning that he has a great chin, meaning like he could get rocked and kind of half fall down. And that's sort of like a insurance policy. Do you know what I'm trying to say? 
Yeah, yeah, we talk about it we, all the we, time. We've touched on yeah. this before. Because yeah. it happened in his fights with Gaethje and Poirier and Chandler in recent memory, where it's like he has extra lives in the game. Like, you can rock yeah, the only, him. The only thing is if he does that with Dariush, Dariush is going to dive on top of him in one second. That is correct. That is 100% correct. A lot of guys aren't going to chase that kid to the ground, which is why he does it in the first place. Because the, even even Rock, that kid can still figure something out to keep himself safe. I think he just feels more comfortable being on the ground. But so does Dariush. Dariush wants to live on the ground as well. He's not necessarily looking to stand and bang with people when he goes in there. So the moment Oliveira gives him an opportunity to go down to the ground and throw some ground and pound, you bet your ass Dariush is going to be there on all oh. fours doing just that. I don't entirely agree. I think Dariush very much is a stander and a banger. I'm not saying he can't. I'm saying that I feel like a lot of times his his bread and butter is that ground game. Yes, that's he's very that's good his bread and butter. But yeah. I think Charles is better. Sure. So I, give, I give Charles the, the nod there. We're going to find out, son. I don't think either of them have the crispest striking. I think... Benil is a bit more of a brawler. Yeah. But yeah. I think that there's sort of an even chance that each one of them could catch the other one. I think Charles is a bit more crisp. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Charles. And I'll say Char- it's going to – this fight has to end in the finish. It just has to. I feel like I I, I, I can't sit here and, and take somebody by a decision. Uh, I'll say Charles by a finish. I'll say third round. You're saying sub or, or knockout? I'll say sub. Charles's like, Muay Thai is very good. It's especially for his style and his his approach to the to the fight. Yeah, his, yeah. his Muay Thai is very good. I'm telling you, man, very aggressive. It's my X factor, yeah. baby. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Yeah, no, his striking. I think his striking. If we're going just striking for striking, I think his striking is significantly better than Dariush's is because Dariush definitely does a lot of ducking under and just throwing hooks and things like that, trying to move inside and closing the distance, but. Um, Oliveira has a lot of good straight punches, long, long knees, which which really help him out, especially when he wants to, to close the distance and enter the clinch. Those knees are, like, paramount for him to do that. So he's, he's, the stand-up is, is going to be interesting, I think, for, for Oliveira. But I think at the end of the day, I think everybody who's watching that fight wants to see what happens when it hits the ground. Oh, yeah, so badly. Okay. Uh, it is, uh... confidence is in a hell of a place right now. I don't know if you guys saw the clip it where is. they asked him about – fighting islam and you hear other people get asked about it and they're like yeah like you know obviously i have to think about how to counter the wrestling and i think maybe i could do this think maybe i could do that daryush was literally like yeah i don't i can't see anything he does that's better than me <laughs> like he was literally like <laughs> i i do everything better than him <laughs> like straight up i was like okay benil damn dude i was listening to uh to to chael as i do now he's got another one on his list darush Oh, what? He says his name wrong? Bro, he can't Everyone's say a name right wrong. if it was written down in front of him phonetically. Yeah, he is the worst. the worst. He's such a talker. Why does he oh, get his dude. name wrong? Do you want to hear another one that's the worst? Sergey. Like, if Sergey wasn't the most common name. Pavlovich? What does he say? Yeah, Serge? Sergey. What does he say? Yeah, see, you would, you would even think. Even Serge, like, you'd be okay with, right? It's not Serge. Sir? Sir? G. <laughs> Come on. Sergi? Sergi. He's uh, clowning, no. man. He's clowning. Yeah, he does this that, like, like, I don't, but I don't know. And if he is, if this is all a troll, it's amazing because he's doing this with, like, every other name. It's uh. it's out of control. I think it's so crazy. And it, 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 like, makes me sad in the car when I'm listening to him <laughs> say these names just How so terribly. How so wrong? He, he is... In the world, he's in the world. Like we we are outside of it, yeah. commenting on it. He is in and of the world. It's Dude, some people just have blockages with names. I remember I used to listen to Francesa a lot, Mike Francesa, and for years, like the best player, one of the best players in baseball was Albert Pujols. Like oh, you would yeah, hear yeah. the name Pujols a hundred times. Pujols, yeah, Pujols. for a decade, Francesa called him Pull Holtz. Pull Holtz. And, and just it. did it for a decade straight, as if no one was ever like, "Hey, Mike, it's Pujols," and he never watched a broadcast. Not just uninterrupted, decade straight. Albert Pujols, Pujols, yep. Pujols. I, so Ariel have these name blockages, man. Ariel has called out Chael Sonnen before on like certain names, especially when he goes on the show and stuff like that. And, and Chael's like, "Yeah, I can't do it." 
Can't do it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dude, nothing All nothing right. will ever take the cake of name pronunciations than uh the comedian Joey Diaz on uh, oh, on Rogan. God. Oh god. Fucking yeah, calling he's, he's Khabib terrible. like Kalabib. Yeah. Yeah. Eddie, what was he called? Steve Steopich. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, too much fun. 